Hey all my fantastic friends, this is the Master Paints the Masters. In these few episodes we're recreating some of the past masters work using my own methods and techniques. And in this one as suggested by a, a viewer, has an amazing privilege to be recreating the work of Henry Moore, a local artist to me. Now we're not going to do one of his legendary sculptures, we're going to be looking at this, uh, this drawing, this is the knuckled trunk. So on this canvas, we are, it's primed, it's uh, pre-stretched and primed, and we've coated it in liquid white. And we're going to hit this now with a little bit of, this is Prussian blue, it's a little bit darker than the phthalo blue we usually use. In places, I'll speed up the video, as you probably can see, just for ease of viewing. And uh, every now and again, we'll be discussing a little bit of, of Henry Moore. Now we'll just blend out this guy, we just want a little little subtle sky nothing too nothing too crazy going on and in the background now we're applying a little bit of color this color is made up of a van dyke brown and a little bit of yellow ochre and every now and again we'll change the flavor of these it's just a little light indication of some some background trees some foliage that, that we, we don't want it too strong because we want the main object, the knuckled trunk of that big tree, to be the to be the the, the, the stealer of the show, should we say? Now, else we're varying the colours as we go along. Just add a little bit of black here and there, maybe a little bit of green. Just make it all sorts of nice variants of colour, just to give a nice little bit of background material. Henry Spencer Moore was born on the 30th of July 1898 and passed away on the 31st of August 1986, which meant I was around in his lifetime. He was born in Castleford, which is a few miles away from where I was born. And the, I can draw a lot of comparisons between myself and, and Henry Moore, and some of that will become uh, apparent throughout this uh, throughout this video now I'm just blending out the base of these these little bushes here you can see I've hit a little bit of orange and a bit of yellow and we'll come back with all sorts of autumnal colors that live in this little wooded part but again just tapping the canvas just just tip tapping the canvas with a, this rounded brush just to create all sorts of nice nice and simple foliage effects again we don't want this to be super crazy now the what we're doing now is on the, the little rigger brush or the script liner brush is just painting in some little distant tree trunks and branches and I've thinned the paint down the paints I use are very thick so I thin it down with a little bit of thinner it's like ink that's what it wants to be like, and it just runs straight off the brush now. I don't always apologize. I get my arm in way, but I can't help it. <laughs> Henry Moore is, uh, is, in fact, he's best known for his, his semi-abstract, monumental-sized bronze sculptures, which are located around the world as public works of art. As well as a sculpture, though, Moore produced many drawings, including the knuckle trunk that was part of his his tree series, and he also produced lots of drawings depicting Londoners sheltering sheltering from the the Luftwaffe during the Blitz. That's obviously in the Second World War. Now, there was a little tree on the left-hand side of the painting, or on the on the drawing so we'll just put in a nice little trunk right there now I've double loaded this paintbrush which means I've gone through some dark brown colors and in a pre-mixed palette of, uh, of light brown colors I've just gone through one side of the paintbrush and as I strike down the canvas it creates a highlight and a shadow all in one stroke nice and sneaky yeah? and with this little script liner brush back to the thin color that we've uh, we've mixed up we can put in some little little branches that are sticking out of the, of the top of this tree just like that just like that easy peasy yeah 
Now, this, uh, this suggestion came from a, a viewer that contacted me via Facebook, saw the, saw the Master Paints, the Masters, uh, on, on YouTube, and then sent me a message on Facebook saying, um, why don't you do Local Hero Henry Moore? And I thought, ah, that's not a bad idea, actually. I'm, I'm used to Henry Moore's sculptures, as, as many people are. But, so I started doing a little bit of research and looking up some of his his drawings and his, his sketches and it, I was instantly drawn to this the knuckle tree it just has the knuckle trunk it just has so much character to it to it it, it really does and having wobbly hands like I have it, it, it it's 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 an easy it's not an easy painting by any stretch of the imagination but if you wobble a little bit or you have a little bit of a nervous twitch in your hands it makes it so you know, unique. Every part of the painting is going to be so unique. Now, obviously, the original sketch by by Henry Moore was, for all intents and purposes, a, a black and white colour, which gave us the freedom to to add colour and add, you know, other things that we don't see on the original. So we can add background material, we can add foreground material, we can add different colours, different seasons if we wish. And and that is, a, again, it, it attracts, it attracted me to this, this style of, uh, of, 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 of recreating the past master's work. Now, if you're not familiar with any of Henry Moore's sculptures, um, please do go take the time to, uh, to look up and, and do a little bit of uh, research on his you know, on his uh, on his works because they are absolutely fantastic. They, they typically depict uh, mother and child or, or reclining figures, and more. Uh, he, he usually it's a suggestive of the female body. Apart from a phase in the fifties when he sculpted family groups, his his forms are gener generally pierced or have holes or or contain hollow parts. And many, many folk, especially around here, especially in uh, in God's own county, um, they they draw references from his reclining figures to the to the landscapes of, of Yorkshire, the the hills and the Pennines. It's, uh, they do have very, they do look very similar. <laughs> okay, so I'm just putting in some foreground material, here, just just loosely brushing in some of this. Just it's basically sap green, maybe a little viridian in there every now and again, a little bit of yellow ochre. And we've worked as base colour for this tree. Now this base colour was, was basically Van Dyke brown, but we hit a bit of black every now and again. We're just going to put some highlights. So on a really small flat brush, some light brown colour. So it's just a Van Dyke brown, a bit of raw sienna mixed with a bit of titanium white and we're just lightly grazing the right hand side of each one of these little trunks they're not quite branches but they're not quite trunks I don't know what they call them but um, we know what they are they're the main part of the tree and we're just grazing the canvas we'll let the tree take off what it wants and leave the rest on the brush. And I've said this many times before. When this when this painting dries, you will get an unreal bark effect. You can rub your fingers over it and it'll feel like bark. And we're just working on the form of of this knuckle tree base down here. We're just it's it's so random. So random. But it works, it really does work. And we're going to go backwards and forwards, adding lots and lots of layers of paint, different colours, but we're going to generally keep the, the highlight on the right hand side and the shadows on the left hand side. That to me is the easiest way of doing it. I, um, I'm right handed, so I, I nine times out of ten always paint the highlight on the on the right hand side of of anything I paint, whether it be trees or or 
or mountains, the garden shed. <laughs> now, if you've got any suggestions for for the past masters, if you want me to recreate somebody that you like um, or, or the works that you're familiar with, please just leave me a comment and uh, I'll, I'll research it, look into it, and if it's something we can do, we'll give it a go. I've got a good handful of, of different different artists that I've got in the pipeline from, from previous from previous videos but if you've got anything that you want me to have a look at please let me know I'll, 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 I'll love to look at uh, different art and see if we can recreate it because this is a real experience for me recreating this it really is now if um, if any of you are interested out there I do have an Etsy shop where I sell some of my paintings. Uh, that's Master Temple Arts. And you can find it on Etsy. You can buy yourself a piece of, 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 of my artwork if you wish. If you don't, you can just browse and, and it, have a look, a look at a, a, a gallery, basically. <laughs> you just browse the paintings. Okay, so we're just adding some darker colors down at the base here. This is pure black, midnight black. And we're going to pick out some dark spots which are going to be a natural shadow left by the uh, left by the trunk and then we vary this back with the light and the shadow and we're playing one off against each other and we're adding more and more paint making it thicker and thicker and thicker and as we go along we, we may thin the paint down because once you get a lot of thick paint on it's it's hard to put several layers of thick paint on top of each other unless you leave it to dry or you thin the paint down somewhat with a little bit of paint thinner we're just picking out these individual little forms and shapes put some down on the roots down here on the feet of this big old tree I'm sure I've seen a tree like this or several trees like this and I, around here where, where, where I live up here in Yorkshire I'm sure I've seen something like this and when when life gets back to normal we can go out and explore a little bit I'll, I'll definitely take some photographs and, and let you know like I've said before uh, Moore was born in Castleford which is in the West Riding of Yorkshire and he grew up as a, as a as a child of a mining family, the early landscapes around here, um, from the, the beautiful countryside to the to the, um, the monstrosities of the, the the coal slag heaps, uh, would have given would have given Henry some sort of artistic outlook, and this carried on throughout his career. At the age of three, at the age of three, Moore attended his local primary school in Temple Street where his teacher uh, noticed he had a, a, a good facility for drawing and by the age of 11 after hearing a story about Michelangelo at Sunday school Moore decided he wanted to become a sculptor now you can see me just put in some some highlights some shadows I'm just playing around here playing light against dark and dark against light building up as always that thick layer of paint just to create that wonderful bark tree-like effect come down this side some really dark color some almost black almost black I sometimes add a little bit of blue into the paint as well that, that can create an, another depth of the shadow a cool side to the to the paint. In 1910, Moore won a scholarship to Castleford Secondary School, where he was taught by progressive teachers, art teachers, who nurtured his talent. Moore wanted to continue studying art, and in particular, uh, sculpture. After leaving school, uh, his father encouraged him to complete a teacher training career, as it offered greater security. So at the age of 17, Moore began working as a, as a student teacher at his old school in Temple Street, 
but he did not enjoy that experience and at the age of 18 he enlisted into the army. He was, he was turned down by the Artist Rifles Regiment which was his obvious choice because he was, con he was considered too short but eventually he was accepted by the, the Civil Service Rifles and was assigned to the 3rd Battalion. Henry Moore, he was involved in World War I. He saw active service and during his time, he was gassed there in a battle. And he returned back to England to, to recover and spent about, about two months in hospital. For the rest of the time during World War I, he, uh, he was a physical training instructor before returning back to France just as the armistice was signed. After the war, Thomas More received an ex-serviceman's grant which allowed him to attend the Leeds School of, of Art and he was finally able to pursue his dream of becoming an artist. Now I'm just I'm still going backwards and forwards, playing light against dark, dark against light. You've heard me do this many times building up the layers, creating all sorts of little niggles and nooks and crannies in this in this bark. It's the kind of place you'd find a fox living just under these roots. Yeah. I definitely as a child I definitely would climb this tree, probably climb it now actually. <laughs> definitely. I do love trees like this. Yeah, they offer so much character and you just know that these aren't going to get chopped down and made into telegraph posts. It's yeah, just so full of character. At the Leeds School of Art, more initially he, he completed a two-year drawing course, a two-year art course in just one year. That is formidable. And he could he could then finally begin to 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 relive his ambition of, of becoming a sculptor and he enrolled on the sculptures course uh, but it had not been taught at the the art school since since the war really but in 1919 a sculpture department was set up just in time really for more to enroll on it and and more basically became the the college's only full-time uh, sculpture student and at his time in Leeds, he met other fellow um, other fellow artists like Raymond Coxon and Barbara Hepworth. After two years at Leeds, Moore won another scholarship for the for the Royal College of Art down in London, and he moved to the capital in the early twenties. What you see I'm doing now is I'm just just dabbing on some, some dark colour between the roots. This is sap green, straight sap green, and I, it'll pick up a little bit of the dark colour that I've already put down. And I'm just going to neaten these roots up a little bit. And this is just with a little rounded brush. I'll just dib and dab and tap and tap and dip. These are words, I don't know if they are. But we're just gonna put this, this is the basically the background material for what would become the, the nice grassy, areas in front of this tree. We'll add a nice little tiny little bush here. This is a, a very light green colour. It's made of cadmium yellow and the tiniest little touch of sap green. Just a tiny little amount. And I'm thinking here about the, the sparkly parts on the, 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 the outer edges of the bush. So nice form of the of the, the little shrub, the little plant that's living out here, little baby tree. And we'll put one on this side as well. And we'll vary the colours as we go along. But we'll just think just thinking about little tiny bushy arms, if that's a thing. Little prongs of foliage. At his time in the capital Henry Moore, he absorbed as much as he possibly could, not only from his training and, uh, and what he'd already previously learned, but there was a vast wealth of museums that were, not, that were just on his doorstep. And he, he, he had access to, 
to the National Gallery and the British Museum, the Victoria and Albert Museum were there as well, uh, with a reference library. He could get anything he wanted, any book, any piece of knowledge he wanted, and he could study and learn about all the sculptures that had ever been created in the world. He found it fantastic. Now I'm going to come back in here with the, the fan brush and we're going to start just dropping in nice grassy meadow sort of material down here. Just touch, touch, touch. I'm not allowing the paintbrush to slide. I'm just, just touching, varying the colours and thinking about highlights as well. You know, even the... The little pieces of grass may need a little bit of highlight from time to time. That's all we do. Of course, I need a little bit of shadow as well. So under this little bush, there'll be a little bit of shadow down there. We can work that in just on the fan brush. Create all sorts of lovely grassy effects. Think about the shape of how this land would sit. Yeah, just like that. Now, after Moore had finished his, his three years on the sculpture course at the Royal College of Arts, he was granted a travelling scholarship and he visited Italy to study the old masters. This was in 1924, but he had also accepted a teaching post at the college, so had to delay his trip until 1925 when a replacement tutor got, got found. Moore continued to teach at the Royal College on a part-time basis until the 1930s. Now in the original sketch, Moore had a little tree stump next to the big knotted trunk. Well, we're going to grow that tree, make it big and strong, and it'll push everything into the background. So we've just added some Van Dyke brown as a bit of a base colour, and we're coming in with a palette knife, and we're just adding some lighter colour and we're going to make the rest of this tree with the palette knife. And again, we'll play light against dark and dark against light. And we obviously, we want the, the same shadow and highlight side. So the, the highlights will be on the, on the right hand side of the tree and the shadows on the, on the left hand side of the tree. And we can vary the, the colours a little bit. We've added a little bit of blue there. Like I've mentioned before, blue makes an an excellent cool shadow colour. Now while teaching at the college he met, he, he met a, a young lady called Irina Radetsky who he married in 1929. After several commissions and, and exhi exhibitions in the 30s uh, this grew Moore's reputation as, as the leading avant-garde artist um, but <laughs> In 1939, World War II broke out. Moore was recruited as a, a official war artist and he produced um, his now famous drawings of people sheltering in the London Underground during the Blitz to escape the Luftwaffe. This is the same um, bombing raids that, that destroyed Moore's London flat and the pair, he and his wife, they had to move home and. Uh, they moved to, to Perry Green in Hertfordshire. They moved into a, a farmhouse in a hamlet called the Hogland. And this, this basically became their home for the rest of, of their lives. In 1946, the pair had a, a daughter, Mary, and over a period of time, Moore developed the outbuildings of the, of the, the farmland uh, into studios. Henry Moore, became world famous, he had international success from the 1950s onwards and in 1977 he established the Henry Moore Foundation to encourage uh, wider enjoyment opportunities uh, in the arts. Now if you have enjoyed this painting um, please leave me a nice comment, uh, if you have not subscribed already please subscribe it does help me out and, and leave me a suggestion on what you would like me to paint next. I really do enjoy reading all your comments. Uh, I try and reply to most of them. If you've got to give up your time to, to, to leave me a comment, I will give up my time to, to reply. But 
may not be straight away. Now the original knuckle trunk sits in the tape, but how much is a piece of Henry Moore's work worth? Well, a statue, a uh, sculpturally created, uh, is, is set, sold for a record 19.1 million at Christie's, the auction house, making him the, the second most expensive 20th century British artist. And in many parts of the world, Henry Moore was the number one choice when it came to public sculptures. He, he, he really was a talented man. Henry Moore died at the age of 88, and though no cause of death was given, he had been ill with arthritis and diabetes. But he leaves behind a, a, an excellent legacy in the foundation and, and all, his, all his works of art that are out there. I'm, I'm just truly honoured to recreate this, 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 this version of one of his, his drawings. Now, let's sign this one down here. And let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. Just sign it down there in thin red paint. And then we'll go and compare the two together. So there we see the one on the left is, is Henry Moore's. And the one on the right is mine. Very different, but that's what we like about this series. So if you enjoyed this, you know what to do, guys. And until next time, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you all later. Happy days.